Master. If you allow me to say so, this triple fugue is built in the most complex proportions I've ever seen. The many themes moving through various forms of isolation and interaction. Yes, young Master Ortnick Hall. Three themes allow for an incredible amount of thematic options, though I've chosen to limit myself to six. The three base themes, and then their vertically mirrored counterparts, interspersed with chromatic scales which drive the fugue to increasing gradatio. Now what really astounds me is how the dramatic use of dissonance still leads to perfect resolution, as if there couldn't be any other way to amalgamate all of these conflicting themes. <sighs> Dissonance has always been considered ill-sounding, and even when it was used, it had to be resolved immediately into a so-called perfect chord. But what is perfection anyway? We humans are far from perfect, and yet our Lord saw it fit to create us like this nonetheless. What I'm trying to demonstrate with these works is that imperfection can be perfect in its own right. I'm not sure the City Council would agree to that. <sighs> the City Council. Poor souls. I forgive them, for they don't know any better. It's not just the City Council, Master. It appears that musicians in general are abandoning the old, contrapunctual style in favor of a more frivolous and accessible approach to music. Gluck, Scarlatti, even your own son Emmanuel doesn't seem to appreciate the counterpoint anymore. Christoph, if you ever want to make a name for yourself as a composer, then you have to write what the people want to hear. Even if this means reverting to easy homophonic tunes instead of complex triple fugues like the one we've just performed. I've become too old to change, and even if I could, I wouldn't even want to. I'm not writing to become popular. I've buried that dream a long time ago. I'm not writing for an audience. I'm writing for myself and for our saviour, praying that he will understand the intricacies of my creations. There can be no doubt that God understands and appreciates the intricacies of your work, Master. Personally, I've never heard music of such perfection. Even if the ears of man may render your work as obsolete, the unchanging mind of God would do no such thing. You are very kind. The counterpoint is a form of art, Christoph. All of the voices are equally important, and even the bass should be singing the tune instead of merely accompanying it. I will probably not live to see the day, but I hope, I pray, that one day musicians will embrace this equality, even the singing bass, as it so thoroughly enriches the musical experience. Rest assured that I will continue to promote your legacy, Master. The art of the counterpoint is too precious to be lost. It was a pleasure playing with you this morning, Christophe, but I have to prepare for theology class now. Would you be so kind as to accompany the boys to the classroom? I will be with them shortly. Of course, Master. Oh, honestly, Elizabeth. Stop staring at Master Altnicol and start scrubbing the floor, will you? You there? <laughs> Silence! That's the block when I'd be pleased if you don't behave yourself! The school prefect whom Master Bach appointed has acted violently again, Mr. Ernesti. Violently? In what way? He, uh, flogged one of the students. Flogged? Are you certain of this? On the soul of my late father, Mr. Ernesti. I've witnessed it myself. This is outrageous. 
I should have him flocked as well. Who does this old Nicol think he is? A public flogging would set a fine example, Mr. Ernesti. Shall I instruct the city guards to apprehend Master Althnikol? No. We shall not be tempted to descend to the same primitive depravity that Master Bachar's at least over our school. Then, what are you going to do about it? We shall make Master Old Nicole return to no behavioral grounds. He will never find another appointment after this, apart from maybe scrubbing flows. What? No, Ernesty. Now you've gone too far. What's this? Now you're laying off Master Altnikor. I had no choice. He flopped a student. That's preposterous! Who told you such lies? Christoph wouldn't do anything of the sorts. He's loved by the boys. In the meantime, Master Old Nicole's duties will be assumed by Master Gurner, who will... Gurner? Again? No, Mr. Ernesti. Over my dead body! Good morning, Master. Uh, shall I accompany the boys to- No, you have been sacked. Sacked? Uh, but... You have no authority. I'm the cantor of the St. Thomas School. Appointing or sacking a prefect is my decision only. Now, get out of my sight! He says that I've been sacked. What? On what grounds? Here. I had to give you this letter. We are astonished that a seminary president would demand that his faculty forsake that which is excellent in favor of mediocrity. Mediocrity? Here, give him this. I'm reinstating you, and you will direct the performance of next Sunday's motive, regardless of what Master Bach tells you. They're not singing, Mr. Ernesti. No, not Bach again. Shall we never have peace? Oh. Cool. 
let us resolve this situation once and for all. Mr. Ernesti, ever since your father's sad passing, there has been naught but bad blood between you and Master Bach. Speaking of which, Master Bach, you have wrongfully undermined the authority of Mr. Ernesti in his quality of rector of the St. Thomas School. You, Master Bach, will refrain from suspending the prefect appointed by Mr. Ernesti, whom will likewise refrain himself from inflaming tensions at our school any further. Master Gurner shall be reinstated. Have I made myself clear? Good. Then I will take my complaint to the diocese and to King Augustus himself. I bid you good day. We inform you that Master Bach has filed a formal complaint to our diocese, requesting that you undo the humiliation he has suffered through the rector of the St. Thomas Institute. We therefore desire that you shall take such measures to satisfy Master Buck's complaint, as you shall see fit. This is our will. Let's put it